Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Asian painting is among the first that ever came to be. It helps us to understand history better. It, it helps us to understand other cultures. It just opens our whole range of interests in a way. I was approached by the library to apply for a grant using the legacy funds. Because of their encouragement, I took it on and thought it would be wonderful if we could get this group to come to Brainerd and introduce more citizens to this type of painting, which I dearly love. Our group is a Minnesota Asian Brush Painters group called Ming Chow and we're fortunate enough to have this space for a two-day workshop. The painters in our Ming Chow group learn from each other. Some of us have studied in other countries, Japan and China and so on. I studied at an art academy in 87. First of all, I got hooked on the brush and all of my watercolors or whatever I did, I had to have a sumi brush, which the sumi brushes are made from usually bamboo handle and animal hair. This, for instance, would be from a sheep or from the beard of a goat. The white, which is softer, and it actually is wool. They're, they do not use acrylic or fake brushes at all. So the hair you have, you don't ever use soap to clean it. You can use ink with them. You can also use watercolors. And so we have landscape and we have still life and we have flower, uh, calligraphy. This is a painting of a tiger, but then these are the calligraphies for a tiger. So the, the, you would begin with the oracle bone, which is done on like turtle shell or uh, carved into cave walls or on bone, and then the next is seal script, which is on your red chop. This you would get in a book right now. If you wanted tiger, it would have to be. And then this is called running grass. And this special kind of paper called rice paper, it is, isn't necessarily made of rice, but sometimes it's linen, and sometimes it's cotton. You can paint on silk. It's just called rice paper, which means it's an Asian uh, paper. And the ink is blacker, even way blacker than India ink, and you can make it go to like seven tones or seven colors. The paints have uh, minerals in them. They last longer, they're more permanent than the general watercolors that we use when we, we paint with different colors. So it's called Asian brush painting, or sumie, which means Japanese ink. And so a painting is a sumie painting, your style of painting is Sumi. Regarding these characters, like Dee was showing you more than one version of them, those early ones were a little bit more pictograph than some of them are today. And I'm told by Asian people that it's important to understand the original oracle bone characters for a lot of these words in order to understand today's calligraphy. I love the spontaneity. You, you pick up the brush, you load it with dark ink and, or color and do a few strokes and you have something. With my experience with painting, I do a very detailed type of subject and spend lots of hours and I, even though I enjoy that, I just love the spontaneity of being able to do this quickly and just can be done beautifully if you get the right amount of water in your brush right amount of ink, right amount of color, and the right stroke with a, on this very absorbent paper. It's just fun. It does take some practice, but it's a labor of love. <laughs> if you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org.
Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.